Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. We have a full show for you here today. Gary Gillette is here, and he's here to talk about Tuba Christmas, a little bit of Tuba Santa. We also have uh, Flagship Friday. We have um, What's New on MCAT this weekend. We have Art Clips and your Art Guide, and your, of course, we even have a Crafts Fair Guide for you guys this weekend as well as uh, a couple new segments I'm going to introduce called Pre-Critic and of course Teen Talk where teens talk about eggnog. So uh, let's get started. We're going to throw it to weather right now and you get to know exactly what you guys can expect throughout the weekend and it's going to be, it's going to get colder basically and you're going to have some snow. It is currently 30 degrees outside. This Today I didn't have to scrape my window too much so it wasn't that bad. Um, you can expect your high to be 36 degrees, your low to be 27. Of course, Saturday is going to warm up just a little bit, and then of course by Monday your high is going to be 23 degrees with a low. Uh, pretty sure it's going to be pretty cold that day for sure. So stay stay reasonably uh, warm out there. But of course, if you want to find out more information, you can go to nationalweatherservice.gov. But of course, there's so many weather apps out there; it's ridiculous. Um, you can also uh, find us on our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com/slash wakeupmissoula. Yes, yeah, so nice. You made uh, write it all out twice. You can follow, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook, and you can um, follow us on Twitter. But of course, MCAT.org is a great resource for you guys to find out more about MCAT and what MCAT is all about. Um, we have local government meetings talking about what's going on um, next. Um, I think it's uh, two, every second Wednesday of the month we have orientation for anybody who wants to learn a little bit about television and learn how to pick up a new school with uh, cameras, editing, sound equipment, here and there, and even uh, more stuff as well. Um, it, you know, the, the only limit is your imagination. But we'll teach you a little bit about um, this medium in television, and it's a good starting point here at Missoula Community Access Television. You can call us at 542 eight. 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT, but you can also email us mcat at mcat.org. Um, here it is, once again, uh, Saturday animation. Every Saturday uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. kids age 9-ish to 13-ish, uh, we're, we're fairly loose about certain ages, um, can come down here for only $10 and they can make stop animation shorts. And of course, I'll show you guys some stop animation shorts as well throughout my uh, run of Wake Up Missoula. And of course, if you haven't watched Wake Up Missoula, then you don't know. Um, here is a little bit of what's happening in the news, and then I'm gonna throw it to a, a nice little video to kind of intro him. Um, so of course, in the top news, um, Royce Engstrom, president of the University of Montana, will be resigning, and Sheila, Sheila Stearns will be stepping in and as interim president of the University of Montana. She's the former commissioner of higher education, and she will be she will be at the helm. Um, this is, duh, duh. Of course, um, after the rate of full-time students dropped by 6.7%, uh, Ms. Stearns requested that Mr. Engstrom to depart by the 31st so they can make transition um, and we can make headway for the future of University of Montana. Of course, uh, if you don't already know, um, um, Mr. Engstrom was uh, hired in 2010, and during that time, he, uh, he, uh, he, he uh, let's see, he, he, he was there before when I graduated, so I, I got a chance to meet him my last year of college and whatnot like that. Of course, before the allegations of rape and um, with you know some of the football players and what Mr. Engstrom did um, after the fact is that he fired athletics director and Grizz coach, um, Flugrad, and then of course he did really help repair the image of the University of Montana and he worked um, with the Department of Justice during this um, dark time in University of Montana history as well. But a lot of people, I don't like to say uh, he was an unpopular president, just that uh, he was a president of the university in an unpopular time. Of course, uh, I found this information via Missoulian, Kaiman, and of course a little bit from John Krakauer's book. And of course, um, sanctuary, sanctuary cities are gaining momentum here around. Uh, with fears of the upcoming Trump administration, many cities have planned or are continuing with their efforts to be sanctuary cities. Um, cities such as New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles say that they would not cooperate with immigration and customs enforcement, much to the funding that goes to help refugees and immigrants are threatened, but with over 200 cities in the United States, um, it's just a kind of a game of chicken between Trump's administration and all these um, sanctuary cities. But 
of course, if you want to know what a sanctuary city is, it's basically um, don't ask, don't deport. Okay, so of course, I found this uh, story on usnews.com. Um, in the world news, um, continuing on the uh, upcoming administration, Russian leader Vladimir Putin hopes to continue working with the United States in their fight against ISIS and overall terrorist activities in the Syrian and surrounding regions to kind of help start, stop ISIS. Uh, of course, Mr. Putin also mentions that any changes in military strategies could be catastrophic. Uh, he also goes on to mention Russia's economic struggle and issues with former economic minister uh, Alexei Yugoslavs, um, who was charged with taking $2 million um, bribe to endorse a state takeover of the oil industry. And I found that out at the BBC News. And of course, they do mention that Russia's athletes during the Olympics had um, a doping scandal. And um, Vladimir says that he was happy that this was kind of an embarrassment to, to kind of put into place that more of a stricter anti-doping policy for Russian athletes for future um, competitions and Olympics as well. But of course, that's all you need to know about what's happening in the news. There's plenty of news going on around in the world. I don't need to tell you that. But of course, um, I'm going to show you a nice little uh, taste of what you guys can expect from Tuba Christmas. And when we come back, we'll have Gary Gillette on to talk all about it. And of course, as you can see here, this is a uh, tuba Christmas at the uh, um, at the Southgate Mall. Yeah, baby. Oh, who is that handsome guy? <laughs> God help me. Well, welcome, Gary. So, oh, yeah, if you guys don't know, this is Gary Gillette. He is the former um, band, oh, thank you, band leader at uh, Sentinel High School, and he also does a lot of uh, he also does the uh, city band, which he out still continues to. Uh, yeah, all I did was retire from the ringing bell, and thank you for not calling me the old band director mm. from Sentinel High School. Just the former. I had a chance to retire, and so uh, I did. But I'm doing a, I'm doing all the fun stuff. I'm just not answering the bell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you tell us about this upcoming um, uh, tube of Christmas that's happened at Southgate Well, Mall? people that have been before always come back for another shot. <clears throat> it's very similar year after year. We've always got special things. I, just, just yesterday, <clears throat> I uh, uh, picked up some arrangements from Mike Rosbarski, the local uh, composer and tuba player. Um, uh, of tunes that uh, we haven't done before. Uh, here comes Santa Claus, Frosty the <laughs> Snowman. There's some great tunes that uh, people always ask for, and, and uh, uh, I, 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 I know talk Mike into doing it. I know one thing, one song um, you're looking forward to is that <laughs> San, um, Santa wants a tuba for Christmas. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I, uh, I Harvey <laughs> Phillips gave that to me, and I, uh, I've done it all over the country, and uh, I, uh, I'm not much of a singer, but I can. I, I I pull it off along with uh, some good tuba players. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're a great uh, talker, music I'm a, talker. I'm afraid so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not much of a singer. So uh, tell us uh, when and where uh, people can go to actually who wants to play oh, in your tuba. Bless you. So folks that aren't tuba players, and I, I feel bad for those people yeah, that I aren't do. tuba players, you know. But if they're not tuba players and wannabes. Uh, or just want to enjoy the wonderful sounds. We perform at seven o'clock at the clock court at Southgate Ball uh, on Friday, December 9th. Uh, and all the players, anyone that that, that wants to play, and if, even if you, you can only play a, a little bit, because we have plenty of folks that pick up their tuba once a year and come to Tuba Christmas and play about oh, 30%, 40%, something like that. We've got plenty of people that play very well and all kinds of people that play enough to get by. And the, the, the composite is this beautiful, wonderful sound. And I coach people if they, hey, if indeed you can't play that part, then 
hey, just enjoy the beautiful sound at that moment. And when you have a hundred of them, you can give and take <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're meeting at the mall at uh, four o'clock to rehearse. And, and I've, I've, I'm lucky enough to scab the old Sears building. Uh, it's in the midst of, uh, uh, of a project right now that's available. So all the tuba players are gonna pull up to the old Sears just like the old days go inside but instead of uh buying a craftsman tool we'll uh <laughs> we'll rehearse right there in that old store space and then everyone will let's break for dinner in the mall like that because everyone will be eating at the mall probably and then we'll wander down the hall to the clock court and do our gigs at seven o'clock cool. uh i uh i i'm a trombone player by birth or by <laughs> since i was 11. there we go uh, like I like, the, I like the harry potter of uh <laughs> trombone players but anyways uh, <laughs> the boy who lived I don't know <laughs> but um, uh, you may call it a, a, a smaller slide tuba yes, 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 yes. a tenor slide tuba is yeah. what we refer to them and we have real tubas and we have tenor tubas which are, are euphoniums and uh, we have alto tubas we'll have some people show up with little uh, e-flat peck horns uh, that with, with the uh, the precursor of, of F horns. And then the people that, that come and just watch are all those people that play soprano tuba. And I told them they can come and watch, but they can't play those trumpet players. Now, if they if, if, if they had a slide on it, they could, they could play uh, alto tuba. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, would, I would dare them to play alto trombo. Uh, would I let an alto trombo? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I'd make them play tuba. It has to have buttons on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you can join me this morning. Um, Thank you, Scott. And I hope that you're enjoying retirement. Oh, oh it's too good. I'm, I'm going to go out to breakfast now. <laughs> I'm going to mail my mama's Christmas package, and maybe I'll go home and finish the paper. Retirement's wonderful. But it's given me plenty of time to get out and do promo for Tuba Santa yeah. and Tuba Christmas because I'd normally be locked in a classroom with, with kids making lots and lots of racket. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the racket is music. Music, that's what it, well, at the beginning, uh, less, you know, by the time it comes to concert time, it sounds more like music. <laughs> well, once again, give us another pitch of where and it when it all starts. Next Friday, which is December 9th. It's always the second Sun Friday, the second Friday of uh, December. And players show up at 4, and audience shows up at 7 mm -hmm. at the Southgate Mall. Well, thanks, Gary. Thanks, I, I really Gary. appreciate you hey, coming Hey, I dare by. you. You can show up and blow again sometime? <laughs> uh, <laughs> is it, wait, are we off air now? Yeah, no, we're still on. Oh, we're still I, on? I'm just going to give a shout out. You played before. <laughs> no, you know, thanks, and you could probably get by. Thanks so much for being here. Rob Scholl and Missoula Community Access TV is here every year. Woo! <laughs> some of those TV stations come and go. MCAT's here all the time for us. And if you uh, want to re reoccur this in your life, we'll be showing it on December 23rd at, at 7, uh, 7, 8, 7, p.m., 7 p.m. And then on Christmas Day, 3 o'clock, does that sound right? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, 30, there you go. On MCAT, all right? So if you don't get MCAT, you can go on the web and dial them up and go to channel 189, and you can watch us there. Hey, Here's Jingle Bells, I dare you, sing along. Let me gotta take a little break, okay? All right, welcome back. Um, I have a lot more to talk about in today's show as well. And of course, that was Tube of Christmas. I have a nice, and of course, it is Friday, and it's time for your flagship Friday video of the week. It is from um, Washington Middle School. And this is starring a kid named Alicio and another kid named Charlie. And I think this is a nice, fun, fabulous video for you guys. And when we come back, I'll do a new segment for you guys. So stay with us. Um, you're in the world 
of creating any material that you want. This is where you create dimensions, anything. So I can create anything? Like, do I use magic? Like, I can't create anything right here. Well, so first you have to be hired to do anything like that. And then um, it's more of a designer type thing. You have to design stuff and then you're, and then you're like a mechanic type thing. Then you can create stuff. Job and I have a pen. Well, technically, if I want a job, that's something called magic. The goal my co workers created. I have no idea how this works, and it's kind of stupid. See, it doesn't work. It says something about this box that I need these metal things put in. I just put the entire box in. Wait a second. Is this what you were playing with when I walked in? Maybe. This is a stapler and it links paper together so it's like carried around on the same thing. So you go like and it helps with homework, it helps with jobs, and boring stuff too. Can you use it as a weapon? I mean, I stapled myself once and it hurt really bad. You're hired. You're a freaking genius! All right, thanks for watching. That was Mind Blown, Flagship Friday. You can watch that anytime on YouTube after today. So of course, um, I have a new segment for you guys. I'm excited to tell you all about it, and it's called Preach Critic, where I uh, basically uh, prejudge movies before I even launch them. So here's a little taste. Let's start it off. <sighs> when John F. Kennedy gets assassinated, find out how his wife dealt with his death in this Oscar bait movie with Natalie Portman. When she's not wasting time with um, playing Find the Myanmar or whatever with Chris Himesworth, she's doing Oscar movies. Um, next up is Incarnate. It's like Inception with Possession. Hmm. Uh, that has a better ring to it um, than Incarnate. So if you believe in Possession and like the idea of using technology to rip that little demon uh, out of your soul using an Inception brain sharing device, then this is the movie for you. It's it's with Aaron Eckhart and he's like a paraplegic, but when he goes into the mind of the demon, he's just like, I can walk and it can fight demons. And it's supposed to be like a thriller, psychological thing. So anyways, moving on. Uh, the next movie is Allied, or as I call it, So I Married a Nazi. Uh, it's starring Brad Pitt as the guy who falls for a girl. But guess what? She's a Nazi double agent. Maybe. Not sure. Uh, but if you like that kind of cloak and dagger type of film, then this is the movie for you. Um, it's it's like that once the, the person you love turns out to be a Nazi, the movie tries really hard to convince you of that fact rather than actually doing it. But of course, here, moving on. Uh, so Mona, or no, Mo, Moana? Mo, Mo, anyways, uh, regardless, uh, if you uh, en enjoy this uh, buddy comedy journey across the ocean that will most likely make you feel your feelings because it is Disney Pixar and make you feel good because hey it's Disney um, also be aware that show up maybe like 15 20 million slate because Disney previews make you forget about what movie you're actually watching moving on here's your last movie Harrier bust here is uh, fantastic beats ba fantastic beasts and where to find them uh, with the newest Harry Potter movie um, that stars a whole new cast in a whole new time period it's clear that they tried to put a whole bunch of magic um, when they have heartfelt moments they're usually met with deadly dangerous threats that could only make anybody anxious at any time and you know the message is clear you have to protect animals from humans and even wizards um, that concludes a uh, pre-critic for you guys and of course um, coming up I'm gonna talk about what's new on MCAT because we have a whole bunch of Megs on MCAT as well let me just tell you about Megs a little bit Megs are 
programs that anybody can request MCAT to do for you. So if you guys are a nonprofit or an organization here in town who wants uh, MCAT to shoot your uh, lecture, your cause, your panel, your Q&A, your book festivals, you can have MCAT do it by logging on to MCAT.org. You fill out a Media Assistance Grants Program, otherwise known as a MAG form, and we'll make a bunch of these videos for you, which you're about to see right now. The cost of not getting involved at, since 2012 with the Syrian quagmire, unfortunately, has been this. The cost of not of great powers such as the United States, its partners, not just the United States by itself, the United States, its NATO allies, its regional partners, the cost of not intervening in Syria has resulted not, in the, not only in the proliferation and the spread of ISIS territory, it's resulted in also the greatest amount of Russian military resurgence that we have not seen since the end of the Cold War. The Russian annexation of Crimea, deployment of military assets and resources to Syria, its proposed expansion into the Black Sea, and also possibly military presence, naval presence in the Mediterranean, is a direct escalation of Russian military aggression that we have not seen, like I said, since the end of the Cold War. Then the railroad came in, and that meant you could ship heavy equipment in to Montana. So the, the, if you wanted to have an underground mine, you know, where you're mining out uh, quartz veins and such to get the gold out of it, you have to have, you know, you have to have hoists, you have to have steam things, you have to have all kinds of heavy equipment and a mill. They had to have a ball mill for crushing the, the rock to get the gold out of it. So that actually costs a huge amount of capital. But can you generalize from that? And the answer is yes. What's rather interesting is over the last decade, maybe 15 years, there's just been an explosion in evidence about the role and importance of historic land uses in shaping biological diversity. The plants and animals that are presently observed in a site being <coughs> influenced by previous human activity. The hard side of things uh, would be more um, efficient use of spaces because now uh, I guess we could, they are doing research and development on you know installing green roofs on solar panels on buildings to maximize the space and also um, uh, looking at the pro probability of using uh, electric cars, especially since because uh, we are very small, so electric cars are quite convenient rather than petroleum, so it will be more of like a switch to uh, renewable energy sources. For the soft aspect of things, uh, I would like to see Singaporeans stepping up more uh, for uh, pursuing things that they are passionate about, uh, specifically for the environment. Korea. And um, the German case in particular is interesting because Germany had a situation almost identical to that of the United States before this reform, which was, uh, took place in 19, uh, the mid-1990s. So before reform, long-term care looked uh, just like it does in the United States. It was partly paid for by the German federal states, the lender. It was bankrupting them. <laughs> um, and it was means-tested, and it shunted people into institutional care when people would rather stay at home. Exactly like the United States. All right, so that's what you guys can expect on MCAT. That's all the brand new stuff. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But of course, that will be airing on MCAT this weekend. So if you guys want to stay and watch it, but of course, you can watch it anytime by logging, logging on to MCAT.org and going on to our video on demand. You click on channel 189. And you can watch everything that you just saw there. But of course, if you go to channel 190, you can also go to uh, all of our city government meetings as well. You can watch the live stream meetings. I have some city council later in today, but of course, I'm going to throw it to Teen Talk. And of course, uh, Teen Talk is a nice little uh, break as well. And it kind of gives a perspective of what it's like to be a teenager in Missoula. But of course, um, they're talking about eggnog so without further ado here is a little taste of teen talk and uh, right after that I will talk all about um, city council so stay with me
I'm Neil Wells, and this is Teen Talk. Today on Teen Talk, how to not get sick and eggnog. All right, so what what do you, what do you do to not get sick, Jackson? Well, um, I get my flu shot. Hmm. And if I still get sick, though, I uh, I cough on other people. Oh, Try and transfer sick. it to other people. You gotta be kidding me. It's the no- People at home, this is the best way. I, I would guarantee a, a 30 day money back guarantee. <laughs> no. Don't Owen? do that. Please. I uh, just eat soup and sleep. But no refunds. But no refunds. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you do to not get sick in the first place in the case of, say, a head cold? A head cold. Head cold? Yeah, it's just, you know, normal cold. A normal cold. Stuffy nose. I'd blow my nose. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a good answer. Thank you. All right. So, <laughs> Ellen, how do you prevent getting sick? How do I prevent getting sick? Well, I'll do all kinds of things. Practice good hygiene. That's a good start and then um, eat healthy get vaccinated um i know i've never gotten my flu shot before i've never gotten a flu shot but i've gotten everything else but um yeah i guess that's it and then um if you do get sick i would just um take whatever medicine you need if it's like if you have like a fever take some tylenol and just sleep it off and um one thing i like to do um, it's like I like to drink orange juice like it's going out of production because it has that vitamin C and that's really good too. Mm. Yeah. And you, Liam? <laughs> well, um, I actually usually, like when my family is sick, I usually um, resist it because, um, well, it might have something to do that I don't drink anything but water like I don't drink soda or coffee or anything you're getting a bad bone structure then unless you eat other stuff hey I Baby eat cereal and that's milk so um <laughs> calcium sure. I would really uh, drink tea too that also doesn't but except for I did almost get sick today in uh biology what happened Paris I tried to Paris, cough on him sites and oh grody mm. grody yeah, I got sick Monday with the stomach flu, and that's going, that's everywhere. Yeah. I know plenty of people who have it now. It's really bad. All right, so now a very uh, interesting choice of a second topic. <laughs> We're going to uh, move on to eggnog. Hell yeah. Ellen, how do you feel about eggnog? Oh, man, I'm addicted. I think over Thanksgiving break, we had one of those, like, leader... Like half gallon oh of eggnog, and I had the whole thing to myself. <laughs> yeah. Some tasty stuff. Liam? Well, considering that I've never had eggnog, really? I can Really? I just, I, I mean, I'll try it soon. Like, but. The hell you will. Yeah. Um. Just this like man, this egg. Man. This this man. This boy. <laughs> anything with egg this boy. <laughs> this boy over here. Hey. Liam. He's a sad. He's a sad <laughs> person. Dude. Just, just, <laughs> sounds like you got you something to say about it. You can donate one dollar to help Liam, Liam today. today. <laughs> Call the number on the bottom of your screen. Sweet free. Liam money. needs your help. <laughs> your help. <laughs> Not yours. Yours. <laughs> See, right there. Please yeah. Donate, please. please. So, and it's for a good cause. How do you feel about eggnog? Uh, it tastes good. Tastes good. It's simple good. and sweet. Of course, it tastes good. Just like eggnog. Anything else? Why do you think I had a whole half gallon? Thoughts? I really have much. To Funny talk stories about eggnog. relating to eggnog? Well, uh, it's eggnog. So. Owen once drank what he thought was eggnog. It wasn't egg. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Whoa. <laughs> that didn't yeah. happen. It, it wasn't. Was it something grody? <laughs> it didn't happen. So <laughs> okay. Yeah. How do you feel about eggnog? 
Well, uh, I guess the only way to say it would be, I love eggnog! <laughs> are you Same. the, um, are you the, the, like, weird uncle who just shows up to a party like, I brought nine gallons of eggnog. Yep, By the yep, way, it's yep. already all in my stomach. <laughs> Maybe not that overboard, but yeah, pretty close to that. More like more like seven gallons. Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. That's how I feel. You about know, Starbucks. just just straight eggnog, not not eggnog with milk, not eggnog and coffee. Yes, just straight eggnog. Yes. You just take like little shots of eggnog. Yeah. Say, you eggnog you Do you know what uh, one shots one awesome. comment I want to make about eggnog is like this kind of is like that one time we talked about how. Holidays are like coming too early. Yeah. Um, they bring eggnog. They make like I don't Halloween care about eggnog. Egg egg yeah, now. they put it in like these little the black cartons. Is that? Yeah. Who cares? It's, it's like that good. It's like eggnog is the eggnog. one exception. It's during um, pumpkin fall. spice eggnog. eggnog that actually does. Eggnog sound really is good. the only exception I think personally to early holidays. It's <laughs> make we should make eggnog a year just a year round. Please. Drink. Hey Jackson, I had to break it to you, but it kind of is. Well, then you find it at uh, your local food farm for any time of the year except Christmas. Dude, Challenge. Like Why a do you think eggnog is uh, um, more common around Christmas? Why do you think it's associated with Christmas so Why much? Why do you think I that? Think probably because uh, of the history. People can booze it really it has, easily. I don't know. No, I think something. it has to do with the like history. I think it's like a medieval thing that started with the peasants. Mm. Yeah. So I don't because I don't think uh, those the peasants couldn't like afford milk, cake? and so they had to make their own thing. Well, it looks like we're running out of time. I'm Neil Wells, and this has been Teen Talk. I Cheers. love eggnog. All right, welcome back to Wake Up Missoula, and it was nice to hear for some teens about eggnog and what they do when they get sick, but of course, um, it's their opinion. <laughs> but of course, it's time, as you can tell from me using this camera, for some city council, and I think that I have three committee meetings for you, three. And uh, the first one is public safety and health, uh, $39,248, $45.80, Five cents was discussed to replace police department protective equipment for officers, you know, like bulletproof vests, safety equipment, and of course Harlan Wells um, stated that the equipment in this line of work should be replaced before the warranty expires because if there was an incident um, past the warranty, liability falls on the department and not the manufacturing. So that was kind of like the highlight of public safety and health. Uh, Committee of the Whole was a little bit different than, of course, it gave a little bit more of an update of what's going on with uh, your... Uh, the mountain, when, no, I guess the city of Missoula's acquisition of Mountain Water Company. So, of course, if you haven't um, heard enough about it as much as I did when I filmed all of the proceedings, um, then you're gonna, but you're about to hear a little bit more about what's going on with that. And Marilyn Marler talks a little bit more uh, about her. Um, her um, communications with some of the employees of Mountain Water Company. One of the things that's been ongoing. Um, parallel to some of the court cases and whatnot is that we have been in touch with the Mountain Water employees and um, we're not expecting or looking today to have a lot of detailed discussion of that. I just wanted to update as part of our every two weeks update that we are having good conversations with them about them continuing their employment at the city once the city takes ownership and I, it's not my place to speak for the employees um, but uh, there's some parts of that that are we've pledged to them to keep confidential, but everything is essentially as we've pledged in the trial process and in the paper that we really want to continue their employment and guarantee five years employment at um, the rate that they have now, et cetera. So um, it's happening. <laughs> All right. So, of course, um, what some of the uh, things about becoming a, prior, uh, a public utility is that every bit of money, every money is basically has to be traced. And if you are in local government, it has to be accessible for the public. So public utility is one of those things that um, they don't know whether or not what is private and what is public knowledge. And when you have a public utility from private, private um, ownership, the public kind of has more of a look to it as well. They get to look at a lot of the things that weren't um, open to the public when it was privately owned. Of course, many, spec uh, many speculated, and of course by many, I mean Carlisle Group, mentioned that the city acquisition water company would put a lot of employees out of work. But of course, like anything in life, nothing is guaranteed. But the city did say that they would honor the contracts of the employees. And one of the things is that the a lot of the employees would 
still be on for five years and officers would be guaranteed about a year or so. Um, and then of course, uh, um, you know, like the president, it's kind of like unnecessary. It'd have to be di the director of that. Of course, uh, they plan to merge mountain water with the uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant, just kind of like the, the operations and stuff like that. So it's gonna be a lot of work um, once it gets started, but of course, here is Dale Bickle with a little bit more information in terms of forecasting the costs and expenditures throughout this possible um, future, and of course, issues with acquiring a mountain water company. And of course, he has estimated notes, and of course, this is also based on the worst case scenario of how much it would cost if it was on the high point of it. Of those costs and and the capital improvements um, w without a rate increase. Now, if some of those, if, a, if we get an adverse ruling, say on condemnation interest, where we already have a ruling saying that the city doesn't owe anything, um, if that is appealed and that is overturned, um, would we have to um, get more financing to do that? Yes, we want to make sure we are covering all our bases to look at that. That may require a increase as we move forward through this process. We'll, we'll be bringing you updated performance that show what that would look like. Um, but that's but that's the. That's the kind of the expected case and then the worst case scenario. And of course, as you can see from the Messenger made in notes, um, the acquisition cost would be $105 million, $105 million and uh, 700000 of course. Uh, of course, with all the legal fees and the actual purchase price of 88 million six hundred six hundred thousand no no eighty eight thousand six no no it's uh, eighty eight million six hundred thousand my bad uh, and of course. Uh, you can find out more numbers and more statistics because I'm just kind of going off of some of the things of uh, people's uh, thoughts and feelings about mo mountain water acquisition throughout this meeting because most of the uh, factual stuff is in the meeting and I'm just basically um, just kind of like trying to go over it as fast as I can and trying to explain it as best as I can. And of course, here's Brian von Losberg who kind of explains the numbers a little bit more than I am right now. On, a, on that particular point, I just wanted to, you to confirm we wouldn't draw that amount if we didn't need it, correct? I think that's an important distinction for everybody to be very clear about. The, the capacity is there, should we need it, we wouldn't draw it regardless and then not use that portion. That's correct. Yeah. And we also, and but also we want to base our modeling to understand the, what that actually means as well. So we just, we're just trying to be as prepared as possible for, for, you know, for the good and the bad. All right, so that kind of, uh, Hopefully that helps clarify some things as well. But of course, that basically concludes everything you need to know about Mountain Water um, Company and Missoula's acquisition of it. Of course, for future aspects of the acquisition of Mountain Water Company, the city plans a short-term bond that would make the water company more of an asset so they can start um, really quickly paying off all the loans once they start getting money back from the rate pays. But of course, they're gonna be spending extra money um, on doing all the repair costs that they uh, critiqued Carlisle when they owned the company for not doing when they said they were going to do it. And now this city is going to be working on doing repairing a lot of the old systems. Because uh, from what I heard uh, John Wilkins say about a year or so ago is that he remembers when he uh, um, when they were laying down pipe is that they used um, recycled metal from um, old World War II uh, cannons, basically. Um, but of course, you can find out this information on your uh, committee of the whole meeting and it is the early morning meeting not the afternoon meeting so um up next um we have some oh and of course the city uh, the city does plan to uh acquire mountain water company january 2017 so it's coming up it may happen so of course um um barks and rec um gave a master um, fee schedule update based on master um, fee plan so if you guys rent out parks for tournaments for softball tournaments and this like that you're expected to pay a little bit more money for renting these things for tournaments and beyond of course um, McCormick Park softball diamond fees are going to go up from $120 to $250 all day fees and of course um, half that for like half days will also double as well. So of course, multi-use fields will go from fourteen seventy-five an hour to fifteen dollars an hour. Neighborhood parks are going ten dollars um, and five dollars for each goalpost. Um, basically, most court field recreation areas people use for terms will be increasing fees. Of course, most costs are 
for updating certain maintenance and replacement costs, and I believe they're going to be putting down some um, sod grass and new um, um, grassy areas in certain areas as well. Um, I said areas twice, sorry about that. Um, moving on, uh, land use and planning. This was another big thing that's happening, of course. If uh, you were here on Wednesday's show, I was talking a lot about public comment, which they were, a lot of people were talking about um, the issues with Costco, but more towards the uh, traffic about getting to Costco. And of course, this is all um, a bunch of city council members talking about, and of course some people from developmental service talking about some of their solutions that they're gonna take place and that they said that they um, are listening to a lot of people who live up on uh, England, Flynn Lane, and Mary Jane Boulevard. But of course, here is Drew Larson. He's from developmental services and he's talking about possible traffic solutions. Transportation planning manager agreed that a signal or roundabout at the planned intersection of Mary Jane Boulevard and Mullen Road would best serve the area because Mary Jane Boulevard will be the collector roadway uh, and it would remove a majority of traffic from Flynn Lane. This would be preferable because of the location of Hellgate Elementary, although ideally transportation planners envision roundabouts at both Flynn and Mary Jane intersections with Mullen Road. Uh, but this would still require Montana Department of Transportation approval. All right, so of course, um, um, what that basically all means is that they're working on it and they're trying to extend uh, Mary Jane um, Boulevard. Of course, here is a nice little uh, representation of that map. And as you can see, Mary Jane Boulevard is right there. Flynn Lane is about right here. Here's Mary Jane. I marked it on Google Maps. And what they're going to do is try to connect these streets through Flynn Lane and just make it more of a throughway. And of course, most of this area is a lot of re new residential areas as well. And they're going to try to connect it to, um, let's see, they're going to connect it down here to Mullen Road. And I don't have an idea of Mullen Road, but this is where Mullen Road is. And they're going to connect Mary Street through that way to make it uh, streamline. Of course, if you don't already know that Flynn Lane is next to a school. So that area is um, minimum of, um, uh, actually a speed limit of 25 in the school zone until 5 p.m. in which they increase it to about 35. So that's why they're incre they wanna divert traffic to Mary Jane to help alleviate some of the traffic that's next to a school, which of course, uh, moving on, um, this is uh, Jordan Hess. Um, he uh, proposes uh, roundabouts um, to help the flow of traffic that's proposed. And of course, John Debari thinks that that's a good idea, but also he wants to add a little bit more to that. And, and I, I do think that really the, the center part of the issue, and I think the majority of the concerns of, of the residents out there is what the effect of P potential development, whether it's Costco or some other entity um, taking place at, at that West Broadway location would, would have on the neighborhood. So I, I really do think that it's time to come up with some creative solutions about how we address um, traffic concerns in that neighborhood, but still take advantage of the road network that has been envisioned and that would ultimately provide a level of service to folks in that neighborhood and in the region as it develops so that we have the kind of connectivity that functions well in our community and provides levels of safety for the school and the residents out there. So thanks for coming up with that idea. And uh, All right. Um, so uh, the next quote I have is from... Um, let's see, John Wilkins, and he thinks that the city and Costco are trying very hard to please everybody, and, he, and he's going to say what... I want to say that in my 11 years on city council, I keep hearing how we don't listen to people. Well, I think that's a prime example. We listen to your neighborhood, and we try to uh, mediate the things that are going on in it and uh, help you out. And, uh, I don't want you to forget that Costco's already, always been ready bending over to help too and believe in what you are saying so uh, you know keep our keep our toes to the fire till we get her done but I think uh, in the end that it'll come up that we'll all be happy all right so um, the next quote is from Gwen Jones and she's um, um, let's see uh, she talks about the difficulty in streets in general in Missoula because she's from Ward 3 and she says she, she, there's a lot of difficulty in terms of 6th and 5th Street 
with uh, so much traffic that goes across and through Missoula. This is not my ward and I am not familiar with this neighborhood so it's actually really helpful getting your insights as people who live there. Um, I do see that Missoula is going to continue to grow and we can't just not connect but my focus is how can we connect different areas of town but manage those streets so that they're livable and they work for everybody. In Ward 3, we have 5th and 6th Street, Brooks, Higgins, all these streets that people transport a lot of people in cars, and it's a constant issue, making them workable so that for the residential neighborhoods they go through, they are livable and safe. And I've walked my kids to school at Paxson across Brooks and Higgins, um, all of their schools. We've, they've had to cross busy streets. So I think there is some change coming, but I think it's our job on council to make sure that we do the best job we can to make it workable and livable for you. So thank you for your voice on this, and this is a process, so we'll do the best we can. And thanks. All right, so um, that was Gwen Jones um, talking about that, and of course we get to hear from a representative of Costco. This is David Rogers, and he explains that Costco doesn't necessarily need to pay for a street, and of course Emily Bentley asked some questions as well. On the side of the neighbors, we don't want to cause traffic through their area. We feel like putting in this section of Mary Jane when it's not really under our piece of property to do so is going to cause more conflict than good for the neighbors. So, sorry, I just need to help me understand. Excuse me? Um, help me understand. So, if we delayed building Mary Jane across that farm, um, there, here's what I'm struggling with. Costco is huge and has way more traffic than anything else we're going to see at that location. If a Bob Wards went in there or something else, not nearly the problem that we have. So when that farm south of Costco develops and it goes in, Costco will still have to, will, should still be on the hook for doing the traffic calming because your use is so unique and has so many cars and is so auto reliant. So are you suggesting that you would pay for that traffic calming later? All right, so of course, um, the question was later answered by um, their uh, engineer that they hired. It is, um, let's see, this is uh, Andy, Andy Delighton. He's an engineer and he talks about the traffic impacts in neighborhoods, areas around Costco as well. Um, as David uh, alluded to, the daily trips um, is, so 11,680 trips, this is what's in the, the traffic impact study. Um, this again is based on uh, information from the existing Costco um, and then uh, um, increased based on the uh, um, increase in square footage for the proposed location. And then PM, uh, peak hour trips and Saturday midday peak, uh, peak hour trips are 995 and 1,235 respectively. And so that equates, if you just wanted to know for PM trips, that's total trips, trip ends. Um, so if you divide that by two, um, you're roughly about 500 trips or 500 cars um, that are going to come to Costco during the, the PM peak hour. So um, uh, there, there's been a lot of uh, speculation around uh, Costco as well, that there, uh, a lot of people saying that there's um, 15,000 people coming in at Costco. Um, David Rogers um, from Costco said it was like he'd be happy to have that amount of people, but that's just not the case. Um, but of course, um, we have another quote from another resident as well. I just want to kind of end on um, a resident's notes and, and oh, Sorry, I just deleted my uh, cheat sheet to know um, who's all talking. And uh, this is Vicky Bostic, and she definitely has concerns about how they're not really talking about the um, issues that arise on Flynn Lane near the school. Appreciate that option. I'm not hearing anything about any calming or any traffic light or anything that needs to happen on Flynn. And that is another huge issue. And I know that that's one that Jessica um, Morris has just received some information about through the engineering firm and that they've been working on and trying to figure out what can happen. So if more monies are spent, unless Costco takes that piece on, but if it's city money that gets spent, that means there's less for doing something that desperately needs to happen before there is a safety issue and there are deaths, to say nothing of the school. 
All right, so of course, that uh, was Vicky Bostick, and that's what she had to say about that. They will continue the meeting. Nothing was uh, passed, and they're going to continue communications with the neighborhoods, um, traffic control, and try to figure out the best solution for everybody. Um, but regardless of this, is that as uh, people, more and more people go to Costco, that uh, there's more traffic and there's less parking in the facility, which even makes it even more congested just off of Reserve Street. Fact remains is that Reserve Street traffic is always going to be a nightmare. And um, what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to alleviate some of the traffic. But of course, most of the people who will be taking Mary Jane Boulevard will most likely be people who live in the Mary Jane Boulevard area and also up on Elmar Estates, um, 44 Ranch, just up up um, Mullen Road West and all that stuff as well. But of course, there'll be some people who um, jump from um, Reserve Street to Mullen to go across Mary Jane to get there. But of course, a lot of times it'd be a lot faster for people. And a lot of people do take Broadway, but I've been down Broadway a couple times and it's not as busy as you would think. But of course, with Costco moving off of Broadway, you can expect traffic to increase in um, on Broadway, but of course, maybe that might alleviate some of the traffic on reserve. But of course, most likely the big thing that will happen is that uh, England Street, the street that people, many people use to go through once they get off of Flynn Lane to get to Costco, will definitely be way less to use as a fact of that. But of course, with any uh, uh, high level of traffic, it's always good to have um, slow down areas and speed limits aren't enough anymore. So uh, Jordan Hess's uh, remarks about having a roundabout is always a uh, fun and a uh, good idea as well. Um, but of course, uh, that was an opinion. I don't want to sound too biased or anything like that. This is an ongoing process and my opinions do not base um, MCAT, City of Missoula, or uh, Charter Communications. And of course, here is, I gotta stop saying of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, moving on, we have uh, some new, uh, a new art clip. Oh, actually, it's not a new art clip. It's the same old art clip. But you can, guys, can. Um, this is the last chance you get. To, you guys get to see this art clip because this art installation at the Missoula Art Museum called uh, Volcuras will be ending tomorrow. So um, check it out tonight. And then when we come back, I'll have your first Friday um, art walk details right after this. All right, there is your uh, art clip of the day. And of course, let's start it off. Here is E3 Convergence Gallery. They're doing White, which is an winter expose, which uh, highlights some of the artists who get inspired by the word white and how what it means to them and they give an artist representation. Up next we got Radius Gallery. They're doing a holiday show. So of course once a year just following the holidays Radius Gallery coordinates and region's largest affordable fine art sale. Of course they have selections from Missoula's favorites. Over a hundred artists in all mediums includes 25 uh, ceramics and stuff. And of course Gecko Designs is having a uh, event uh, K. Giroud, and of course, uh, Aspect Realism for all of y'all to enjoy in this new ven art venue that is located near the Red X's in downtown Missoula. Um, up next is the artist. Oh, wait, never mind. I guess I got that, I got that all backwards. This is Gecko Design. I don't know. What am I doing? Um, here is The Loft, and let's see. 
Oh, I guess I'm all backwards today. Oh well. So let's uh, let's slow down just a little bit. Um, this is what's happening at the loft. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That's so weird. I could have sworn. Oh, there it is. It is um, featuring art from the joint efforts of painter Alyssa Durling and photographer uh, Flory Edberch, and, and for an opening of a new collective art show. Um, this one is Gallery. 709 in um, Montana Art and Framing. Barbara is a prolific artist and will show also be uh, purses, jewelry, dolls, hats, and more. Um, this is at the MAM and they're opening a new thing. It's called Binary. And Binary is um, join Trey Hill and uh, Adria Moon for an opening night of their masterful ceramic exhibit, exhibit um, at Mizzou Art Museum, Binary Form. C ceramic abstraction. Um, the pairing of artists generates dialogue about similarities and difference differences in artists' formalist sensibilities. So there's a basic uh, artist statement in a nutshell. At the Roxy, um, they're doing a uh, I am a patriot and of course the movie premiere with a cast and crew of this Montana made film it, it, of course here's the plot after growing up separately the death of their father reunites the strange brothers Eddie and Owen Garen as the two brothers begin to make up for last time they find out it's not always easy to outrun the sins of their father of course you can find that Friday December 2nd which is today at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Saturday 7 p.m., 9 p.m., and of course Sunday, 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and of course the last thing I have is Poems Across the Big Sky. And of course this is a book release party. This is at the University of Montana Turner Hall Dell Brown Room, and this is starting at 7 p.m., so a whole bunch of wonderful art stuff as well. Oh, I have two minutes left in the thing. And I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of your, let's see, let's see, do we have Arts and Crafts Fair? Okay, here's all your arts and crafts fair on Saturday. Florence Holiday Bazaar starting at 9 a.m. Hellgate Elementary, which is just off of Flynn Lane, starting at 9 a.m. Frenchtown High School and Junior High School is having a crafts fair. C.S. Porter Crafts Fair is starting at 10 a.m. Frostbite Festival, 10 a.m. And of course, if you before I run out of time, MCAT is having MCAT will be shooting the Parade of Lights, but of course the Parade of Lights is happening starting at noon tomorrow on Saturday, pretty much all day. And of course, you can get pictures with Santa Claus from one to five at the Florence Hotel building. And then at six o'clock, they'll have the Parade of Lights. And around 6.15, 6.20ish, they're gonna light up the tree in downtown Missoula, and it's gonna be just wonderful. And of course, I would have shown you a clip, but we don't have enough time. We have about a minute left in our show, and I wanna thank you guys for joining me. I wanna thank Gary Gillette for joining me in this show. And I wanna thank my teens and all my kids from um, my after school program, the flagship program, which offers MCAT an opportunity to teach kids about our wonderful medium and hopefully inspire a new generation to uh, learn how to film and edit and just kind of capture history um, whether or not it may not be history now it would definitely be history later so uh, of course it is um, oh I don't even know why that's still up there yeah okay so uh, without further ado um, I'm going to end the show and I want to thank everyone for joining me. And, of course, I'm history for this episode of Wake Up Missoula. And you can find out more information about wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. And you can log on to MCAT.org for more information. Goodbye.